Barakatay Yahawa, Barakatay Yahawa Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Barakha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahawa Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Barakha Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to our apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. It's Brother Mathathi from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. <clears throat> and the title of his lesson is um, Mass Casualty, right? Mass Casualty Events, you know, and um, this is inspired through, you know, the news that came out, you know, late last night or early this morning, whatever you want to call it. You know, I believe it was around 1, 2 in the morning that uh, this cargo ship has struck the um, the Baltimore's Key Bridge, right? Um, Francis Scott Key Bridge, yep. You know, and um, and um, the mayor or the governor, I forgot which one in particular, but it said that um, a mass mass casualty. How did they say it? Mass casualty incident. Right, you see here, Baltimore Bridge collapses after being struck by a cargo ship in mass casualty event. <laughs> right, so now, I believe um, they said it's only six. Search ongoing for six missing. You know, I believe I read um, one of them down here that they said that um, a body recovered, as you can see here. You know, but it happened at one, two in the morning, right? So that's when traffic is at its lowest, man. But just imagine if that would have happened, you know, at the uh, at three p.m., you know, or four, you know, at the peak of rush hour, man. You know how many cars would have collapsed into that river, right? And this is just the beginning, you know, of um of these mass casualty events, you know, because it's only going to increase, right? As our Lord Yahweh Shai. Uh, gets closer, man, to his coming. In this particular one right here, it says Key Bridge Collapse will have lasting impact, including on state finances, right? Now, I had uh, read a little bit in it, but then they had um, asked me to sign up, you know, and to pay in order to read this. But it says including on state finances, man, you know. So that port in Baltimore is not going to be able to be used for a little minute. So that means it ain't going to be no ships going in and out of there, man. So that's going to have a, a, a drastic effect, you know, on the state finances, as that um, article just said, you know, but also on the goods and different things being shipped in and out, you know, of that particular city, man. You know, without further ado, I want to get right into the precepts and I want to start here in the book of um, Revelation, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> and the eighth verse this is revelation eight i started seven and when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and i looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him you see so this is a spirit that yahweh basham yahweh is going to send over america man you know, and how do I know that it's talking about America? Let's keep reading. It says, and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto him. Right. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. You see. So it says power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. A simple Google search. As you can see, it says the race to the ends of the earth created a map that depicted what was then known as the fourth part of the world. The other three parts being Asia, Europe and so forth. Right. So it's letting you know that the new world, look, the fourth part of the world, Wikipedia, the new world also called the fourth part of the world. You see, 
So it's talking about the Americas, man. <laughs> you know, what's the when Christopher Columbus came over here, Cristobal Colon is his actual name. What did he say? He was coming to the New World. So he was coming on this to this side of the earth, man. Showing you the New World is talking about, or the fourth part of the world is talking about America. Let's see. Yep, as you can see there, fourth part of the world, the new world. It's talking about America. Yeah, but that's all we need. Let's go back. <clears throat> back in Revelation 9 and 8, I'm sorry, 6 and 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. Right. So death and hell. See, this is a spirit that's about to be over this place, man. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth. Right. Over here in the Americas to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. You see. Because the Lord told us here in the book of Ezra. This is the book of second Ezra. The 16th chapter. And I started three. A sword is set upon you. Didn't it says uh, gave power over the fourth beast to kill with the sword? <laughs> right. A sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back? A fire sent among you and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? So these plagues are being sent. Now, what are these plagues? Let's just jump back to the 15th chapter and let's read the fifth verse. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction. You see, so that's when this this these different things is about to be running rampant over here in the Americas, man. You know, and they're going to be caused through what different mass casualty events. Different bridges collapsing and shutting down, uh, um, you know, um. For lack of a better word, you know, uh, 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 the roadways or the waterways for goods to come in and out. And what's that's going to lead to? Famine. Right. And then what happens in a famine? Let's jump down to 15. For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. Right. Now, why are they going to stand up and, 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 and uh, uh, go against each other with swords in their hands? Right. It says, for there shall be sedition among men, right, uh, uprising among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Right. So these is checkpoints. You see. And with famine and mass death, what happens? Pestilence. Disease. So now you have quarantines. Right. All these things is going to be happening in these last days. Verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. You see. For the lack of bread and great tribulation. That's what's coming upon this place, man. You know, so expect more mass casualty events to happen here in America, man. You know, whether they're orchestrated or not, ultimately, it's Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai that ordained it to happen, man. You know, and once again, that happened at two, I think they said one, two o'clock in the morning, man. Once again, just imagine if that was during rush hour, man. <laughs> you know, it would truly be a mass casualty event. A mass casualty incident or whatever the hell they called it, man. You're going to see large numbers of people getting sent back to the spirit world. You know? Just like during the time, and, and, and it's fitting seeing that we in a, uh, um, we're in a feast of unleavened bread. You know, so during our exodus, during our salvation out of Egypt, what did the Lord hit that place with, man? Plagues. You see? He strategically broke that place down, man. He took away their, 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 their water source, right? Turned the water into blood. They didn't have nothing to drink. 
He destroyed their food source with the uh uh it's like it with the um the hail mingle with fire and the locusts. <laughs> you see? Pestilence broke out amongst them uh through the boils. Right? And we can see how about Shami Al Shah doing that today. Once again, whether it be through Esau or whether it, you know, whether uh um it be quote unquote coincidence. It's all of your how about Shami Al Shah, right? These different waterways, these different rivers being polluted, these different um uh poisons for lack of a better word, you know, contaminants, right? That's being spilled over into the water. Uh, the, the 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 food processing plants, man, <laughs> you know, planes just crashing on them and they just burning up and, you know, different things is happening. Once again, whether it's strategic, which speak as a man, I believe they are. But ultimately, it's your how about Shem Yahweh Shah that's performing these things, man. You know. The Lord is making the supplies to dwindle. The Lord is taking away what he said in the book of Isaiah. I will take away the whole stay of water and of bread. Now, that was prophesied about what happened to us back then in our land. But it's going to happen today in, uh, in these times, man. The Lord is going to take away the whole stay of water and the whole stay of bread. And this is what's going to be the result of it, man. Chaos. Anarchy. That spirit of death being out here in hell following with him, man. Right? Because when we jump over to the fifth chapter, let's get second Ezra 5 and 1. It says, Nevertheless, as, as concerning the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in a great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. Now, this happened already. You know, this is going into our, our great falling away. As it is written in the book of Second Thessalonians, it says what? You know, that the man of sin be revealed and that there be a, a great falling away. You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing that, right? So this is speaking about our great falling away right here, man. Verse 2, but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago. In the land that thou seest now to have root, shalt thou see wasted suddenly. But if the Most High grant thee to live... Thou shalt see after the third trumpet that the sun, sun represents this wisdom, shall, shut, shall suddenly shine again in the night. The night represents Esau's rulership and the moon thrice in a day. Three means understanding. And that's what the moon means. So we will have this wisdom, knowledge and understanding again, man. Right. So this is how we know that the first couple verses is talking about what our great falling away and the fourth verse is going into you know, uh, uh, our reawakening. But I'm applying this first verse into the days that we coming into now, because what the Lord is going to do, he's going to make his men's mouth, right? The prophets. He's going to make their mouth. To cleave. This is the book of Ezekiel. Three and twenty six. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth and thou shalt be dumb and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. So the Lord is going to silence his prophets, man. You know, as it is written, let me get another one. In the book of Amos, this is Amwas, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> this is uh, Amwas 5 and 13. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time for it is an evil time right so if the prophets are going to keep silent what's going to happen man judgment is going to ramp up and the way of truth shall be hidden then the lord say let's get um six second edra is six or is it nine might be nine so lock you bear with me I think I was right with seven. Oh, it's the same fifth chapter. I'm sorry. Uh, second address five 
I'm going to jump down to 9. It says, And salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. Going back into what we read in that 15th chapter. The neighbor shall rise up against his neighbor with a sword in their hand for the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Then shall all friends destroy one another real quick. Let me jump over to the 13th chapter. Is it the 13th chapter I'm looking for? No, it's 6. Salakia. Second Edger 6 and 22. It says, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. This is that famine. Going back into uh, uh, that pale horse. You see? It gave power over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, to kill with uh, hunger, right? And suddenly shall the sown places appear appear unsown, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And these are your uh, grocery stores, man. All these stores going to be empty. It says suddenly. So it's going to happen like that, man. And the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall be suddenly afraid. And that's your alarm system, right? You got your little amber alerts or your tornado uh, warning systems, right? But see, this is going to be <laughs> an alarm letting you know that all chaos and hell is breaking forth, man. You know, verse 24. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, you see. And the earth shall stand and fill with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, your waters, right? Ain't gonna be no running waters into your houses. And in three hours, they shall not run. So let's jump back over. Back to five. And um, nine again, and salt water shall be found in the sweet and all friends shall destroy one another. You see why? Because it ain't going to be no running water. You know, the natural rivers and springs are, are contaminated. They pollute it. So they're not going to be drinkable. The storehouses, your grocery store is going to be empty. So it's going to be a lack of bread like we read, man. Then shall wit hide itself. You see? It says the way of truth shall be hidden. Then shall wit hide itself. And understanding withdraw itself into his secret chamber. So the Lord is going to uh, withdraw his men. Right? His men is not going to be accessible. See, now you can, you know, the men are still out there on the highways and hedges. You can, you can also access the men via the internet. Right? Through these videos, these electronic epistles that's uploaded. But what's going to happen, man? The Lord is going to cut cut the internet off. You see, you 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 see, the Lord is already making plans to uh, uh and He's making the plans through His left hand through Esau Edom. Because you see these different legislations and these different, you know, um, statutes or laws, whatever you want to call them, being passed down. You know, the anti the anti him. They want to throw that around. Now you can't say that it, it, it was the, the J-double-O's that, 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 that murdered, you know, our Lord, the Messiah. Which we know it wasn't. It wasn't them Khazars, man. You know. The true Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, specifically you Negroes, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin and Levi. They were the ones that gave up our Lord, man. They were the ones that said, let his blood be on be on them and their children. You know. But these are all just um, subtle ways that Esau is going to ban, going to try to ban the Bible and ban, you know, the Lord's prophets from speaking this word, man, because this word is killing these people, man. This word is bringing this place down, man, and Esau is grieved to his soul. It says in the book of Sirach, the 30th chapter, he that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Bro, these, these Edomites are grieved, man. And I ain't talking about this regular peon fucking Edomite you see every day. I'm talking about the elite of Edom, man, that actually knows what's going on. 
which is why great fear fell upon them when we stood upon our feet, according to Revelation 11 chapter, man. These heathen, starting with Esau, Edom, the elite of these heathen, they are grieved. You see? So they're starting to make their moves. And ultimately, once again, it's Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah making his move, man. Verse 10, and shall be sought of many and yet not be found. Then shall unrighteousness and incontinency be multiplied upon the earth. This word incontinency means, you know, um, no, no self-control. So unrighteousness and, 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 and um, the lack of self-control will be multiplied upon the earth, man. That's why jumping back up. Verse two, but iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest or that thou hast heard long ago. So these different events that's going to take place, man, that's going to call cause, you know, public panic. And then what happens with public <laughs> public panic, man? You know, you're going to have people uh, trying to leave the cities. You have people rushing to the stores, panic buying. You know, so this is just the beginning, man. And man, we can't wait to uh, to see, you know, what the Lord got in store after this uh, eclipse take place, man. You know, beautiful times we live in here, man. Beautiful times. So I'm going to end it there. You know, Tawadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKodash, double honors to our apostles and elder bishops of the great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.